Good morning. I'm calling to order the Management and Internal Services Committee meeting for Tuesday, July 12th. Um, um, I'd like to start with an invocation, if you'll please join me. Lord, thank you so much for this beautiful weather and for, um, for the folks who have gathered here today. Thank you for the rights we have, including the right to assemble and to govern ourselves. Be with us today as we go through this committee meeting and go through our agenda and take, take care of all these items that we have to do the people's business some of these items are difficult and not easy decisions. Lord, be with us and help us to make these decisions and vote on these items in fairness and in truth. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Can you please pledge with me? Pledge. pledge of allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of Republic, nation, God, visible. Thank you. We have uh, two members Amen. of our committee present today, and that represents a quorum. We'll move on down the agenda. Um, uh, I'd like to get approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Motion to approve. Thank you so much. And um, do we have any changes to our agenda? Not to my knowledge, Madam Chair. Thank you. I have no presentations or items on the consent agenda. Moving directly down into debate. The first item um, is some new business. Mr. Johnson, what do we have? The first item we have for your consideration is a grant award for fiscal year 23. This is for CJCC. That's the uh, Juvenile Coordinating Council incentive grant. Um, this is an ongoing grant that we've had for some time. Uh, the amount was $130,000 uh, that has been awarded. Staff recommends acceptance of the incentive grant for juvenile court in the amount of $130,000. Is this... Um this is for a very specific expense, correct? It is. So uh, they, they run the uh, aggression reduction therapy course, um, and this is for medium to high risk offenders. Um, is it a program that once this grant has run out, is going to be something we're going to have to budget for long term? Um, potentially. Uh, it would just be a matter of whether or not, you know, it's something that, that we feel like is a benefit to us. I think certainly it's been a benefit. We've gotten this grant for the last nine years, I believe. So it's an ongoing Thing. That's yes. very good. All right. Move to consent. Thank you. Next. Uh, the next item we have for you is resolution 22-26. This is our SPLOS list for 23 to 28. Um, as you know, the uh, staff has been has been working for some time, really a couple of years, uh, putting together a SPLOS list. Uh, in doing so, we've come up with, with ideas that have been brought to our attention, either by the board or by the public. Uh, we had a series of listening sessions recently where we went into East District of the county uh, to hear from the citizens to see what kind of projects they wanted included in that list. Uh, the list you have before you today is a, a comprehensive li list that is a result of uh, those listening sessions, result of uh, commission ask, staff ask over the years. Uh, there's also several projects on this list that um, uh, are continuations of current projects in some way, shape, or form. So uh, the county continues to have have needs in certain areas, so there are some continuations as well. Um, it is a, a comprehensive list. There are many projects on it. Uh, the, the total amount that we're looking to have the voters approve is $280 million. This is the one cent sales tax. Uh, this is not a new tax. There's no additional tax that's going to be going to this. Should the voters decide not to approve this, then um, we would have to wait a year before we took it back to the voters again. So. Uh, um, Effectively, Columbia County would go to a 7% sales tax instead of an 8% sales tax. And I think we've been very successful uh, being able to keep up with the needs of our citizens without raising their property taxes by using that extra penny that everybody pays, whether they're a Columbia County resident or not, uh, seems to be uh, the, the fairest method, uh, in, in my opinion. Uh, so I'm sure there are lots of, of questions about the, the list itself. Um, I would hope that that uh, the committee would send this item to debate should you decide that that, that is the, the proper thing to do uh, to give the full board an opportunity to speak on it. Um, I do think, though, this is the time in committee uh, for us to hash out any issues that, that the committee members may have as the chair and the vice chair uh, and for us to answer any questions about specific projects or specific amounts or anything like that. Now would be the time to do that. I know we're typically very efficient in committees and we just move through things important item so uh, we can leave it to you madam chair to how, how you want to proceed with questions I'd like to first ask is there any public here who would like to make a comment to the committee having none uh, our fellow commissioners who are here do you have any comments at this time very good we have a uh, 
a potential list in front of us. This has gone through a, a long process to get to this point. Um, it is not final by any means. What happens with this list is it will go to the full board um, at our next commission meeting. After that, it will go to the voters. Um, so the five of us do not have the final say on this. The voters will give it an up or down in November as well. And I'm sure we'll hear a lot of discussion in the public um, as to the, the merits of this. And we look forward to hearing from anybody. But if any um, if anybody, you or anybody you know, has comments about the items on the list, please let us know before next Tuesday. Because um, once the list is set, that's what goes on the ballot in November. May I have a motion to send it to debate? Uh, motion to move to the debate agenda. Very good. Thank you. Next. Uh, next item we have for your consideration is an intergovernmental agreement with the city of Harlem and the city of Grovetown. Uh, this also relates to SPLOS 23 through 28. Uh, the law requires uh, the county to negotiate with its cities to uh, determine percentages for proceeds from sales tax. Uh, we did meet with both cities, had a very good meeting with them uh, on May the 3rd to renegotiate these percentages. Uh, at the end of the day, we came to the conclusion that uh, Grovetown would receive 10% of the SPLOS dollars for their special projects and Harlem would receive 3%. And this is after any countywide projects are taken out. Again, that's according to law. Uh, staff recommends the approval of the intergovernmental agreement between the county and the cities of Harlem and Grovetown for the distribution proceeds of the 23 to 28 SPLOS. Are the percentages based on population or land size or it, just a negotiation in general? It, it could be based on several things. So uh, unlike unlike Lost, which you have eight criteria that you have to negotiate with, uh, SPLOS is a little bit different. Uh, should we have not gotten an IGA, uh, then it would have been distributed strictly on population, according to the law, but it would have been a five-year SPLOS instead of a six-year. So the fact that the county and the cities can come together, we can negotiate any percentages we want to, whatever is good for the community. Um, I, I think that the, the 10 and 3 actually represent a little higher uh, percentages than, than is equal to their population in the county. Uh, but I think both cities have very worthy projects and needs, of course, uh, and the county is comfortable with the 87% uh, of the proceeds that we'll have beyond these. And the municipal governments of these two uh, cities are happy with? They are. They are. And, bo and both of them have, have signed the intergovernment. It's been through their councils, and uh, they've already signed them. Very good. This goes to debate, or uh, I think it goes to debate? You could actually, is this a resolution? It's not a resolution, is it? Uh, no, you could actually send this to consent if you like. It's completely up to the committee. Move to consent. So moved. Thank you. Is there anything else under your new business section, Mr. Johnson? <clears throat> I don't believe so. All right. Mr. Kennedy, how are you today? Very good, ma'am. How are uh, you? Very good. Are you going to spend some money? <clears throat> no, I'm not. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, Corbin Cooney is going to come up here first and talk about a board appointment. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Corbin Cooney with the Emergency Management Agency. I uh, have a board appointment uh, request for the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities Regional Advisory Council. Uh, in 2021, Dr. Angela Burke was appointed to the council to fulfill an unexpired term that ended on June 30th. Uh, Dr. Burke wishes to continue serving on the council for a full three year term. Uh, staff recommends approval. Move to consent. So moved. Thank you. Anything else, Colonel Kennedy? Glenn, is there anything else on your on your list? No, not for me. We'll move on uh, to internal services, and, and then we'll talk later about spending. Okay, Ms. Reese. <laughs> <laughs> the first item I have for you is our annual agreement with Columbia County Community Connections. As you know, this is a nonprofit entity that is funded with grants, and these grants are reimbursable grants. So we front them or advance them some funding um, so that they can operate in the amount of $225,000. And in return, they pay the county a fee of $10,000 for the use of these funds. This agreement is for the period July 1, 2022 through June 30th, 2023, and staff recommends approval. Move to consent. So moved. Next. I'll take the next one. Uh, the next item we have for you is a, a change to policy. Uh, this is actually a, oh, excuse me, do it. This is actually uh, revision of policy 305.1. This is our DOT drug and alcohol testing program. Um, 
we constantly review these policies and look at this. We actually, uh, during a recent audit, we verified that there were some necessary changes in provider contact information. Those are redlined on your policy that you have attached on page 21. That's the only change to the policy is the names uh, and addresses of those three providers that has been updated and staff recommends approval to the changes of the policy. Thank you, that's straightforward. Move consent. So move right. next. I also have two policy revisions for you. The first one is comprehensive policy number 401.1. This is up for our education reimbursement program. We currently allow a maximum of $3,500 during a calendar year to be reimbursed to a county employee. The IRS actually allows $5,250 to be excluded from taxable wages, so we would like to increase the, uh, the amount that we're currently doing from $3,500 to $5,250. This item was, in, this, this funding was included in the budget. How many employees do we have taking advantage of that benefit? Yeah. Move to consent. Thank you, next. And the next policy revision is policy number 614.1 for our vehicle allowance and mileage reimbursement. For several years now, we have held our reimbursement rate at 55.5 cents per mile. We have uh, reviewed this in light of the recent fuel price increase and are suggesting that we increase both our vehicle allowances and our mileage reimbursement to 58 cents per mile. This is an increase of approximately 5%. The standard mileage rate with the IRS is currently 62.5, so we are still under that. Staff recommends approval. Moved consent. So moved. Is there anything else on your section? That was it. Very good. Technology services. In that one. Good morning. I have three items for you this morning. Um, <coughs> excuse me, renewals. The first thing I have for you is our annual support and license agreement renewal for our Munis software. Munis is our ERP software that we use for finance, HR. Uh, permitting, licensing, things like that. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> this is a budgeted amount, and uh, the total is two hundred seventy-nine thousand two forty-four seventy-three. And uh, staff recommends approval to make this payment. Where is Michael Blanchard today? Michael's he, on PTO this week. Okay, so he sent you to come ask. Yeah, for he, all he, this. there are a lot of big ticket items. So he did. Said, he tell I'm, you I was going to roll my eyes. Sends <laughs> <laughs> his regard. I bet. <laughs> I promise he'll be back, and I'll give him some more big ones. Okay. Move to consent. Thank you. So moved. Next. Okay. The next one I have for you is our Cisco SmartNet renewal. Cisco is, of course, all our uh, infrastructure equipment, our phone equipment for the county, <laughs> and this is the annual maintenance and support that we pay for all of that equipment. And uh, again, this is a budgeted amount, the amount of two hundred sixty-four thousand four hundred twenty-three dollars and sixty cents. Staff is recommending. Uh, this for this year. That's a lot of money. <laughs> <coughs> move to consent. So move next. And the next item I have for you is another uh, Cisco item. It is our security uh, licensing and support for our security firewalls, uh, inter, uh, excuse me, um, devices as far as uh, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention, our malware, antivirus software such as that, and we are in the, this is the fourth year of a five-year enterprise agreement with Cisco, and the amount on this is 101573 It is, again, a budgeted amount, and staff is recommending that we pay this. Your tab is getting big. <laughs> so. <laughs> so moved. Next. That's it. Thank you. All right, thank you. We have more. Are you spending money also? Not today. Okay. <laughs> Well, tell me what you're thinking about. You I know? am thinking about, my name is Harold Sparrow. I'm the broadband manager. Uh, with WC Fiber, we are currently leasing, uh, would like to lease uh, 12 strands fiber total, seven for one project, that's six miles, and five strands for another project, that is 12.1, with a grand total of income of $16,020. This does include any businesses and any residential homes from our previous IRU. Is that 16 per year or 16 over the 20 years? That is 16 over the 20 years. Move to consent. So move next. 
The next right wait, now. Wait, is it? There's a question. Oh. Not 16 a year. 16 per year. I was over the life. Life. Is that right, Harold? That's it's over. 20,000 over the life of the agreement. So 16 per year? 16 per year. Yes. That's okay. correct. That's, that's better. Correct. That's better. All right. But it, yeah, but it remains 16. Correct. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you right, for the clarification. That. Okay. Next. Uh, WC Tell is concerned with the Furies Ferry uh, road construction project. We've had our fiber hit three times already and made a non-noticeable repairs on them. Um, they would like to lease out strands of fiber to down Washington Road to basically mitigate any damages to their network. Well, what's the, I, I apologize. I don't what like what's the question? Over? Oh. What 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 am I? Well, the the monthly monthly maintenance cost for this is three hundred eighty five dollars. This is what we would get per month. That they would pay us. They would pay us until the road construction is finalized. This is okay. a backup for their current. Okay. Okay. We just don't feel comfortable relying on one so close to the construction. So we this want a backup, which will last the time period and well until such time the construction. And they're paying and us. They're paying us. Paying us. Okay, I can do that. Move consent. So move next. Uh, so currently, we have a dedicated uh, internet access with GTT, uh, which we are getting two gigabytes. So that's like a two-lane highway. Right now, we are paying about twelve hundred per month for that. Uh, we're asking to switch over to Cogent which we will get 10 gigs, which is five times the amount, for only $950 a month. Uh, the total lifetime of the contract, which is three years, is $34,700. Move to consent. So moved. <clears throat> is there anything else? Yeah. Thank you. All right, I don't see anything else on the debate agenda. Um, for my committee, are there any legal matters? Thank you. Um, the staff reports. First of all, just for your information, as our uh, personnel savings, you can see that uh, we did finish uh, FY22 with a total savings of a little in excess of a million dollars, was a million eight thousand four sixty nine. Uh, this was budgeted money for for positions that was not used because the positions weren't filled, uh, or we moved people around, were able to save money in positions or promoted two people instead of hiring one, and we eliminated a position. So lots of things go into that, but at the end of the day, it's a, it's a true savings of a million dollars, and we were still able to get the job done, which I think is important. Uh, you can see the, the time period uh, just from July 1st to now, we're already at a general fund savings of $37,000 and a total savings of forty four of our $350,000 goal. Um, that said, we are working diligently to try to fill every position that we have. Uh, we've just been through the budget process, so a lot of positions have been uh, looked at. Some have been eliminated. Some have been changed. Uh, so we're, that's just an ongoing process, but it's just for your information. Thank you. Questions? questions? Questioners, any questions? Thank you. Next. <clears throat> the first report I have for you is the year-to-date budget report. We have once again ended another fiscal year. Of course, we still got work to do with the audit coming up soon. Um, we are finalizing year-end expenditures and revenues, but this is a preliminary report for you. Everyone is operating well within their budgets. Questions? Yes, good job. And the investment report? Well, first is the sales tax report for the month of May. We received just over $2.9 million. We currently have an annualized percentage increase of 11%, and this amount was 12.27% greater than last May. No question. Fantastic. Yeah, it is good. Thank you. <clears throat> Next. And then the final report is the investment report for your review. I have no questions on that. No Sir? questions. <clears throat> have any questions on these? Um, one final um, request for public comment participation. Seeing none, we have no items for executive session, and I will adjourn this meeting, and we will resume in About three minutes. Three minutes. Thank you.